firewall hands-on. Purpose, we isolate a light blinking function behind the firewall. Step 1, we will create a basic project with STM32 QBDE and integrate the firewall HL. Step 2, we will modify the linker script to define our security enclave location. So we will define a secure flash area and also a RAM data protected area. Step 3, we will configure the firewall. So we will define the different address where we want to protect the code segment, the non-volatile data segment and the volatile data segment. Then we will create a secure code and call it Synthical Gates. Let's switch to the STM32 QBDA. So let's start this hands on. So we will use the Nucleo L476RG. So the first step will be to create the project, MT1. We will add the firewall HL inside it because it's not configurable thanks to the graphical interfaces. The next step will be to modify the linker script to create the different region and then to implement the code. So let's start. New project. I take the board selector and I select my nucleo. Test firewall and finished. We initialize all the peripheral with a default mode. For the moment, the firewall activation is not possible from these graphical interfaces. So I will need to add in the STM32L4 HL driver. As you can see here, you only have imported what is needed for this configuration. So I need to add the firewall to the include file and the source file. Okay, so for this, I will need just to go in my cube firmware L4. If I go in the drivers, the STM32L4 HL driver, include file. I've got the firewall header file here. I drag and drop in the project folder. So I propose to copy the file in the project. Perfect, we now have got it. And the same thing for the sources. So here I go to take the sources. I take the HL firewall.c and I put it in the sources of my project. And I copy the file. Okay, so now the HL file are here, but we need also to, I would say, configure uh, or to activate this module in the in the project. To do that, let's go to the HL conf file, and to find it, you go through the main.h, which open the stm32l4xx underscore hl. You open it, and then you've got the stm32l4xx underscore hl underscore conf.h. This one you've got the activation of the different HL module. So here you will need to uncomment line 63, the define of the firewall module enable. Then you save it. And that, once that's done, you can call the HL API of the firewall. So the second step now is to define the region where we will put our segment in our linker script or linker file. So to have in this file. Here we've got the memory definition and we had some secure flash. Okay, so it could be in red execute. So origin would be eight and Zero F C zero zero four. I choose the zero zero four because I will start my protected segment at F C zero 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 and the call gate will be located at zero zero four so it can ease the declaration of the function. And let's take a length 
or hmm, 16k should be enough. So let's decrease the previous one to avoid to have an issue. 08. Okay, for example, we can also configure a volatile data one. So CQS RAM. So it will be located in the SRAM one for sure. So let's read right. Depending on what we configured, it will be correct. Uh, let's take the origin also somewhere in the SRAM one. Take this for example with a short chain of 512, for example. So, if we need some volatile data, we can put in this segment. Okay, so here we've defined the memory and the range of it. Uh, now we need to add the section. Okay, so for the code, I can put it there. So, my section. So I have to remind this name because it will be used in the code to declare where we want to put a function. Okay, it's open and close. First, it's better to align. Four. Okay, so then I will take whatever is in my section. Okay, and then I will just realign after, just for properties. And my section will be my code protected and I will put it in the secure flash. Okay, so here I just take all the section will be located at secure flash. And when I declare the, my first function, which will be declared in my section, it will be located exactly at this one. So if I protect FC0000 in flash, then I've got my call gate that is ready, okay? So that is for the secure flash, and we can also protect the RAM, or the SRAM. So here I can just add, I would say, dot protected uh, secured data. Okay, I can just do a such kind of declaration. Yeah, it's a little bit simpler. Dot secure data. And dot secure data stores. Okay, I have to locate this in my SRAM that is protected in the secure SRAM. Let's try to compile this just to check that the syntax is correct in this file. Okay, so I've got an error, line 77. Oh, my fiction, a line. Okay. I think it could be sensitive to such, such kind of things. Yes. Okay, compilation is okay. So now we've got the linker script. We have defined the different region and we can protect them. So now let's switch to the main. We will add the configuration of the firewall. So let's open the main.c. I prefer to close all those tabs first. So classical main, init, system clock, initialization of the peripheral. So I propose to put now the initialization of our firewall here. 
Let's define a block. Okay. So first I will need to have uh, the firewall structure that is needed by our HL. Okay. So let's do firewall. And we've got the type def, firewall type def, inip type def. So it's exactly what we need. And we've got firmware dot init. We can have a look to the structure. So basically the code segment address, the code segment length, non-volatile data segment start address, non-volatile data segment length, volatile data segment start address. Then the volatile data execution and shared the, on the additional attributes that we have seen in the theory before. So not so painful to configure, I would say. So let's start with underscore in it. So there is code segment uh, start address first. Okay. So you remember in our linker, we have selected this. It's to any the loca the to ease the location of the call gate. So what I propose is to start my code segment at this location. Okay. Then firmware in it dot code segment size or length, sorry. So here we can take 2000, for example. Our firmware in it. Um, so non-volatile data segment address. So this one plus this, okay. Let's put it just after if we need so. Then we can e. So here where where we can put the constant if we have some. Lens. Let's say I don't know. Why not? I would say something short. Volatile data segment. Uh, um, okay, no, that should not be this. Don't remember. Okay, it was V data. Sorry about this. V data. V data start address. So here we'll put the one we have defined here. So here we need this. Sorry, firmware underscore init dot v data lens. Two hundred or so. Okay, and do we need some additional attribute? No, I don't want to set it as executable. So here I would say we've got main configuration of the firmware in it. So we just need to call the function the HL primitive firewall. So we want to do the configuration of the firewall. Then the structures firmware in it, but it will be a pointer on this one. And I think I think that's it. Let's compile this. So here we have written, written sorry, the configuration of our firewall. We have not activated the firewall yet, okay? So what I propose to do before activating the firewall is to define the code we want to protect. My unsecure code is executing just here in the while. What I would like to do, I would like to call some protected code. So I will code protected function, which be a void, okay, um, protected uh, 
function. And this should be the call gate. Okay, so let's define this protected function. So it could be done in the user code here. So it would be a void. And nothing as an argument. Okay, so this function should be the call gate of our firewall. Okay, and remember it was a second word just after uh, I will see the definition of this address. So it should be located in 80FC004. And is exactly what I've defined as origin address for my secure flash. So here we've got the syntax to put this in the good section. So we have to play with the attributes. And then we say that it should be located in a section. And the name of this section is my section. Okay, I should not miss anyone. So this name should be exactly the same that is defined here. Okay, doing this, you will locate the function at the address 0800FC004. Okay, so here we are, I will say, in the code gate. So here we are in the code gate. And now, whatever is executed, I would say, is inside or the firewall is open now. So if you remember, one of the things we have to do is to disable the prearm. You remember the purpose of the prearm? If it's disabled, if you are jumping outside the protected segment, then a reset will be generated. So, okay, we've got some HL function to do that. So, take care. Here now, we are behind the firewall, so we can only access the segment. So, we need to pre disable, but as you can see, this is a macro. Why it's so important? Because there is a, an equivalent which is HL firewall preamp disable without the underscore underscore, which is not a micro, and which calls something that is inside the HL. So outside, I would say my protected section. So take care about this. Now we are behind the firewall, and every function needed should be in my section. Okay. So I disable. Then I would like to call some protected function, which is toggle led. Toggle led function, so it will be executed securely. When I finish to execute this toggle led secure, then I will re enable the prearm so, and re enable it. Okay, so now I will define my toggle led function. But this toggle led function should be also in this section, okay? It should be part of the secure uh, segment. Call it toggle led. It was also a void. And also here, take care about something. I won't call the HL GPIO toggle pin. Why? In fact, the HL GPIO toggle pin code is not in this section. I could redefine to modify it or such kind of things, but I prefer to have a direct access to the register. That way I will always be in my code segment. Okay? So I go in the GPIO. I've got the Toggle pin. If I copy this code, so in the HL GPO toggle pin, I select this code and I will adapt it. My main. So for us, uh, the LED is in 
GPIO A5. Okay, so just put, I would say, the good name here. Let's art code it. Underscore five. Okay. And it was for the GPIO A and GPIO A. So we've got the code protected here. This one is a call gate. We disable the preamp. Everything is in place. If I go in my main, I've got the protected function. For the lead blinking, I prefer to have a shell delay. And do you remember something quite important for the firewall? We need to disable all the interrupt before entering in this protected data, in the protected section, okay? I think we have well seen why before. So now we need to disable all the interrupt. So an easy way to do it is underscore, underscore, disable. Q and we can re enable it just after. Okay, so I would say the code is functional and we configure the firewall, but we have not yet activated it. So I propose just we text this to test if this is functional before activating the firewall. Okay, so I build. I will debug this one. And if I just load the code, my LED is blinking. Okay, so I would say it's functional from if I put a breakpoint here, I can check the PC in the register. FC00A, we are really in the protection section, segment, sorry. And the same thing for the toggle LED, which is also located in what is protected. So I can also here for test purpose, just try to call directly the toggle LED. And as the firewall is not enabled, it should work. Terminate and reload. Hello, chat. If I check, it was OK. Oh, sorry. Good. Shutting down. Connection was lost. I will just unplug and plug my board. And debuggers again. I launch it, this time no issue, and we can see that it's functional. So now, maybe it's time to activate the firewall. So we've got the HL function for that. Enable firewall, quite simple. And first, Let's go through the cool gate to ensure we don't have any issue. Terminate and reload. So I'm just launching it. And um, what is the status? My LED is well blinking. So it works, I would say. 
I would say it's functional. Now let's try to call the toggle LED directly. That means we will try to call a function that is protected by the firewall without opening the firewall thanks the call gates. This time we should meet, meet an issue. So if I just go in step by step, maybe it's interesting. So firewall is enabled. I try to disable interrupt. And you do optimization, we directly go to the reset handler, in fact. And so it's relating to the fact that the firewall fell. So if I just run it and show you the results, I can even reset it will never toggle. So really here we violated, we try to enter in the toggle LED, which, uh, which is behind the firewall without opening the firewall. So I just put again my code properly, and then we see it works. Terminate and reload. We can run it and to check with the debugger, oh, with the camera that the LED is blinking. Mm, so we finish this hands-on with a really basic one, and I show you how to configure the firewall and manage to, I will say, protect some code. So it's a dynamic protection, so you have to configure it in your code. I hope you, you like this hands-on.